Good morning, and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. Especially remembered at Mass today is Edna Levet. Please stand for our entrance hymn. of Eucharist, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We prepare to offer the Mass by calling to mind our own sins, asking God's forgiveness. God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on high in lofty mountain. On the mountain's heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it. Every winged thing in the shade of its boughs, and all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree. Lift high the whole lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we ra would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. the Lord be with you. <clears throat> Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of his own accord the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, and the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wheels the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can I use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke, to the, spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Mark points out at the end of the passage today, uh, Jesus frequently uses parables to uh, make a particular point uh, that's found certainly not only here but throughout all of the Gospels, particularly the Synoptics, although John does as well to a small lesser extent. Uh, in this case, Jesus addresses the dilemma that most of that, the early Christian community was dealing with with regard to the, how the, the growth of the kingdom was going to come about. They affirm the fact that Jesus, by his life, death, and resurrection, and ascension, had established or initiated the kingdom. But the, the question was, how, do, how does it grow? And what, what role do we have? I mean, I'm talking about the disciples there. What role do we have in the growth of this kingdom? And he points out that the essence of the growth of the kingdom really depends upon the Lord himself. That it's God's grace that will bring about the growth of the kingdom. Not that the disciples are insignificant. You know, the end of Matthew's Gospel, he says, go out, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he adds, uh, behold, I will be with you till the end of time. So that the understanding is that Jesus is the, the initiating force and also the ongoing force that will keep the kingdom going. The disciples, to extend that metaphor a little bit, are more like the ones who would water. The, the, the seed, the garden, but that the growth is dependent upon God's grace and not so much on the efforts of the disciples. And that's uh, really an important concept to keep in mind, not only for those early Christians, but for all of us as well, because, uh, you know, when we look at even society today and the way it re reflects itself in the church, you have some who are on a more of a liberal vein, others who are on a conservative vein. And those who think in a liberal way, well, the, the kingdom should grow in this way. Those who think in a more conservative way think the kingdom should grow this way. And then there's all those in, in between. But the point that the Lord is making here is that we don't determine that. God determines that. We cooperate. And the success of our efforts 
really depend on how much we are aligned with the teachings of Jesus. And those are fundamental teachings which, of course, we celebrate and we affirm every time we come together uh, for the Eucharist. But again, it's important to keep in mind that the essence of the kingdom relies on Jesus, not upon our own particular efforts or our own particular desires. You know, you look through history, even into our own last few centuries, the uh, um, ideas that people have can distort uh, religious ideals into whatever particular thinking that they, they um, possess or acquiesce to. And uh, the importance, again, as I want to emphasize, is that Jesus is the source of what we believe. The closer our values are united to his, the closer we're going to be to the growth of the kingdom. He tells his disciples, particularly in Matthew, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt, of course, at the time, and to a certain extent today, but more, more so in the past, was seen as a preservative. And then the light, of course, would be enlightened. So Jesus says, you are the ones who are to preserve what I teach you, and then enlighten the rest of the world by that. That's exactly what we continue to have as our mission today. And you know, I, I, I said this many times before, but I, it's, it's so important to keep in mind that our missionaries are the ones who do exactly that. They preserve the kingdom and they enlighten people throughout the world. And we do have, as you know, various collections during the course of the year to support them. And really, uh, they deserve every bit of support we can find because it indicates our desire to share the growth of that kingdom, allowing it to come through the, the sincere efforts of those who bring that message throughout the course of the world, even to the most difficult places to bring that kingdom. Uh, so again, it's a reminder of exactly what we share as a community. We try to unite there in doing that. The second uh, example he uses about there is the, the uh, mustard seed growing into the large shrub. Uh, I've always liked that particular metaphor for the kingdom because it points out, as Jesus said, it grows very slowly, takes patience, perseverance, for all that to come about. But when it does grow, and all of us are the beneficiaries of that, it gives shelter, gives comfort to those who come to it. And notice, birds of the air. Uh, it's not meant to be in any way exclusive. It's meant to be expansive, those who would come. Very similar to what I, I said last week, if, if you remember about the notion of the word many in the consecration. The opportunity is open to all, but for various reasons, some will not accept it. Some will not come to participate in that kingdom that Jesus has established. But the opportunity is there. It's not meant to be exclusive in any way. It militates against what was very common at the time, what the conventional wisdom was, that uh, Jesus came only for the Jewish people. And again, he completely dismisses that. He came for all people, for all time. And again, I reiterate, we're all the beneficiaries of that as well. And that's what that metaphor, I believe, is really meant to uh, make very clear to all, that Jesus has come to expand that opportunity. But it does require a willingness to accept his teachings. Take up your cross and come follow me. Whatever you do, at least to my brothers and sisters, you do for me. And many other examples that he gives us as to what, it, what the criteria, if you will, that he gives us for, for the kingdom of God. We come here today, we come week after week to affirm what we believe. We believe Jesus established that kingdom, we believe we are participants in it, and we believe if we stay faithful to it, persevere in that faith, we will share in the promise of eternal life. That's the great gift of our faith. That's what we celebrate. We affirm it for ourselves, we affirm it for all others, particularly those we come here, but also hopefully by our witness when we leave here to bring others to a similar understanding and appreciation of that. I pray and hope you all do as well, every Mass, that we will persevere in that faith and as I said earlier, come with the promise that brings of eternal life with the Lord forever and the glory of heaven. I invite you all to stand now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord lifts high the lowly tree and makes the withered tree bloom. So let us lift our prayers to the one who raises and invigorates us. For God's holy people, that the witness we provide to the world may enable the kingdom of God to flourish and grow so that all living things may dwell in peace and harmony in its shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they champion those who toil for justice and nurture peace, so that the seeds of justice and peace may bloom and ripen the world over. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may respond with generosity and care to all who suffer from trauma of all kinds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers, catechists, priests, parents, and all who teach our children the Catholic faith, may the seeds they plant and tend may, blues, may blossom and grow long beyond the time we spend with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we make our commitment to the Archbishop's annual appeal, may we remember God's generosity for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve as law officers and first responders all over the world, may St. Michael their protector keep them safe from harm and bring them home safely to their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in the military, especially our own prisoners, may God protect them as they serve our country, we pray to the Lord. For those to be baptized this weekend, their families and sponsors, especially Marley Rose for Tuso, we pray to the Lord. For all of our deceased prisoners and benefactors, all have recently died, including Guy DiStefano, Philippe Tremel, Patricia Davis, Alvin Pelsinik, Ellen Selman, Louis Viola, Father William McCarthy, William Mahern, David McKenz, Francis Manoia, and at this Mass, remember especially Edna Levesque, may they all share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. O God of all creation, you care for us at every stage of life, nurturing and strengthening us, impelling us to bear fruit. As it builds your kingdom, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers which we make through Christ our Lord.
victory, my friends, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And Lord, accept this sacrifice in my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O oh God, when the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rise of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. When the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving past of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anthony of Padua and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, and gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be.
For those unable to receive the Lord sacramentally, we now offer the prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentary, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Lord, as this reception of your Holy Communion foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, bless us all. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Hey, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seek ruin of souls. Amen. Mass is ended. Let's go now in peace. Thanks.